Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well today, staying inside, staying safe, and all that good gear. Welcome back to the channel, man. Welcome to this transfer news video. I'm going to be talking about three headlines that have riddled Chelsea football media over this last sort of day or so. One being a really positive piece of news, one being a kind of meh piece of news, and one being a, oh, do we really want that? Oh, I don't know, maybe. Actually, it sounds exciting. Do you know what I mean? Kind of piece of news. To be honest, there's positives to be found in all of these news stories. So hopefully, if you're a Chelsea fan, you'll enjoy it. Quick thank you to all you lot who have donated to my NHS fundraiser. It's smashed, well, we smashed the target a little while ago. If you want to donate, if you want to do something to help out the NHS, the link's in the top of the description. And if you drop your Twitter handle in the little message when you donate, you have a chance of winning a Chelsea shirt. It ends probably in about 10 days, I think, maybe a bit less. So get in there. Please do a little donation only if you can. All right, let's get on with it. So the three things I'm going to be talking about today are... Tino Andrin signing a new long-term deal at Chelsea or agreeing to a new long-term deal right now because he's, you know, quarantine, self-isolation, social distancing, you can't sign the contract yet. Manchester City have apparently beaten Chelsea, apparently, potentially beaten Chelsea, to the signing of Leicester left-back Ben Chilwell. Oh no. Obviously, if you know me, you'll know I don't care. And also, I'm sure you've seen over the rags the last couple of days, stories regarding Inter Milan, Conte's Inter Milan's Lautaro Martinez, up and coming hot shot striker. Apparently, Chelsea have blown Barcelona out of the water with a bid and are very seriously going in for him in the summer. Do we believe it? I don't know. Would he be appropriate for Chelsea? Maybe, probably not, but maybe. I'm going to talk about the player himself, the stories, and all that good gear. Let's start with Tino then, the 18-year-old academy product, sort of attacking midfielder, wide forward, forward generally. He's agreed a new five-year deal, which sees him stay at Stamford Bridge till 2025. He's made a couple of appearances for Chelsea's first team under Frank Lampard already, the 18-year-old, and he's very, very highly rated in the Chelsea setup around the club. And he's pretty much, maybe, if you consider Billy Gilmore already in the first team, he's pretty much the next one off the rail to, like, get into the first team and really demonstrate immense ability. Perhaps him and Ian Mutson as well, who've both recently agreed new long-term deals. I've spoken about Mutson before, how he'll back himself to be the rotational left-back for next season to whoever Chelsea buy, whether that's Tellez or whatever. And Tino, he's pretty darn good, man. If you've watched this guy, he's built so incredibly well um, physically. He's really, really dominant, but also he's very, very technically good. A lot of people say he's a lot like Ruben Loftus-Cheek, but he's not really. He plays further up. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is very much a sort of left center mid, drives from deep. Uh, like he is, They're both tanks, but Tino likes to play between the lines a little bit more. A little bit more twinkle toes in as a number 10, I suppose. He yeah, offers that physical dominance in that area, which is interesting because you think of number 10s as kind of like slight small people, whether it's like Hazard or, I don't know, Mason Mount. He's like a proper little number 10, isn't he, nimbly? But this guy, Tino, he's a beast, but he can play between the lines and he loves scoring goals. So great news for Chelsea Football Club. It makes you think like the likes of Mason Mount's going to play further back now. And makes you also think the likes of Conor Gallagher will probably just go on another loan next season because Tino is going to be in the first team. Next up, let's talk about Ben Chilwell. Now, I, <laughs> I was a bit tongue-in-cheek at the beginning of the video when I was like, I don't care. The thing is, right, Ben Chilwell's obviously a very good player. He's the starting left-back for England, so there's that. The thing is, he was just in really stinky form for a few months, ever since sort of Christmas. Obviously a good coach, like the likes of Pep Guardiola, will see through that and be like, no, he's gonna be good, I can use this. They need a left back, they're obviously playing all sorts of players at left back for the last couple of years. And I don't know what the deal with Benjamin Mendy is, even if he's not injured, I think maybe now he's just out of favor. Although when he first came to the City team, Mendy, he exploded on the scene, he looked like the best left back ever. Certainly he completely changed the way Manchester City played. Suddenly having a left back suddenly just changed the whole team dynamic, which was very strange. Positive, I guess. Point being, it looks like they're in for a left back. And it's been reported that they've beaten Chelsea to the signing of Ben Chilwell. I think maybe this is because Chelsea have cooled off a little bit. 
and Chelsea are looking elsewhere. You know, obviously there's Hakimi stories. I don't think there's much in that. I've obviously spoken about it, reported on it on Football Therapy before. But I think Chelsea are very, very seriously in for Alex Tellez and they've been negotiating with Porto for a little while now. They obviously see a lot more value in Tellez, someone who can just slot straight in. And although they'd probably prefer Chilwell in terms of a long-term project, us Chelsea fans, if you want to see a player just slot straight in, I'm pretty sure 90% would have said Alex Tellez. But at the same time, I don't want to denigrate the choice of Manchester City going in for Chilwell because they'll see a player and they'll back Pep Guardiola to develop said player into something good. So I'm not going to like slag off the signing, but it's going to be like a lot, a lot of money. And Chelsea, even though they really do need a left back, that money can be distributed throughout the pitch. So Tellez and more up the pitch. Right, Lautaro Martinez. Apparently Chelsea Football Club and Frank Lampard have blown Barcelona out of the water with a potential offer slash maybe even official bid to Inter Milan, Antonio Conte's Inter Milan for Martinez. Lautaro Martinez has a buyout clause for £102 million, but it's only valid, interestingly, for the first 15 days of July. Now, whether Chelsea are willing to trigger that particular release clause or not, apparently they've put in a big, big bid offer, opened up a line of communication with Inter Milan, and they're willing to offer the player a weekly salary of £169,000 per week. Now, you'd understand why Barcelona will want this player. He's obviously a very talented, silky operator, and they're going to need a long-term replacement for the likes of Luis Suarez. So I get why Barcelona would want a new striker centre forward. I'm not sure what their financial situation is at the moment, but it's interesting Chelsea's coming all guns blazing for this signing, reportedly, so saith the media. I haven't got any ins on this particular story. I'm just telling you what's in the headlines. Now, before I talk about Lautaro himself as a player and his numbers and stuff, Let's think about this. If Chelsea really, really, really are interested in this player, hopefully they can have a bargaining chip. Like off the bat, you'd think, well, Conte sued Chelsea and won. He was not happy with Chelsea when he left. Although I think maybe he's got no problem with the fans and the general like people around the club. The people at the top of the club, he had a problem with and he sued him and won. Why would Conte sell Chelsea any player, especially like his sort of hot shot, most expensive property. Well, I'll tell you. Two reasons, really. One being I've theorized, theorized, made up this thing in my head that because they've spent so much money into the last two transfer windows for Antonio Conte, maybe they need to make back some FFP or balance their books a bit more for FFP. Maybe they knew they were gonna have to sell their hottest prospect in Lautaro Martinez, and maybe Olivier Giroud goes the other way or something, which gives them another striker to play with, although then it will be big man and big man with Lukaku and Giroud. But they might be thinking, right, well, this is the opportunity to do that. And that's sort of part A of the reason why they might do it. And part B to part B? Regardless, Marcus Alonso. Antonio Conte loved Marcus Alonso. He loves buying players from Chelsea. Remember, he's only just bought Victor Moses, so he has bought a Chelsea player really recently. And he'll want to get his other Premier League winning wing back in the mix as well as backup. He doesn't care about age, Conte, remember? Remember when he's at Chelsea, he wanted to buy loads of 42-year-old footballers. He would look at Marcus Alonso at the age of was he 29 or something and be like yeah fine I've got a good like contract out of that and he can score me loads of goals and he's a dead ball specialist let's do a deal regarding Alonso to, uh, 70 million pounds and Martinez of course the other way easy now do I think Lautaro Martinez is worth 100 million and do I think Chelsea need him? This is a tough one. Now, obviously, Lautaro Martinez is an absolute superstar in the making. He's very young, he's very silky. He's not doing explosive numbers, but if you look at the way he plays and his really high work rate, looks like he's built for the Premier League. But did Chelsea need that? He's done his best work playing with Romelu Lukaku this season in a front two. Chelsea don't play a front two. They very, 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 very rarely played it under Frank Lampard. Not to say he can't play the role, I'm just saying his recent game time has been up there with another player. Now, as little nimble Martinez, is he going to hold up the ball in the Premier League? I'm not so sure. Now, in terms of looking at style and player profile, this is indeed difficult to see, but I don't want to throw it out just yet because it's quality. 
Chelsea need to impose themselves on European football again by really making their qu squad quality. Of course, they've got the youngsters coming through and they just need to supplement those youngsters with superstars around. Martinez fits the bill in that sense. Does he fit the bill stylistically? I'm not so sure, but people at Chelsea Football Club know more about football than I do, so there's got to be an element of trust. Now let's pop up the transfer marks graphic next to me regarding Martinez's numbers and information. This season in Serie A, he has 15 league goal contributions and 22 appearances, which is pretty good. It's not bad. Is it? Yeah, that's pretty good considering, and, and you know, they're not like mega free scoring that team, so that's pretty possible. He also has five goals in only six appearances in the Champions League this season. Obviously, the biggest stage, the highest level of football, five goals in six is an elite return. And it, like I said, it's not just the goals of Martinez, it's just how he plays. It's silky, it's Galactico vibes, you know, that's why Barcelona want to basically want him to be the heir to Luis Suarez. But is he going to score the goals? Chelsea are creating all these chances. It's almost like they need an elite marksman to just put them away. Bang, bang, go, 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 go. 28 league goals this season. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure he's going to do that. But does Chelsea have a plan? Who knows? Maybe they do want to play him with Tammy Abraham. That would be weird. Anyway, we'll see. So what do you guys think? Get down in the comment section below. Express your thoughts and opinions on everything I've spoken about in today's video. Let me know how you're feeling. Like the video. That helps me out a lot. Come follow me on social media at FootballYannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me today, you lot. Enjoy the football that's not happening and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby